welcome to our online service for All Saints Anglican Church in Huntsville. A reminder that I am unmasked because I am uh, by myself at this time in the building. So wherever you see that, that's what's happening. And wherever you see someone's masked, it's because there was more than one person in the building. We begin with the penitential rite. A voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, with him I am well pleased. O come, let us worship. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who's almighty word, chaos and darkness heard, and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Savior who came to bring on your redeeming wing, healing and sight, health to the sick in mind, sight to the inly blind, now for all humankind let there be light. Spirit of truth and love, life-giving holy dove, speed on your flight. Move on the water's face, bearing the lamp of grace, and in earth's darkest place let there be light. Gracious and holy three, glorious trinity, wisdom, love, might, boundless as ocean's tide, rolling in fullest bright through the world far and wide let there be light lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise O god make speed to save us O lord make haste to help us glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. But now thus says the Lord, 
He who created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed and made the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. And together we pray. God of mystery and power, open our eyes to the flame of your love and open our ears to the thunder of your justice, that we may receive your gifts of blessing and peace to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second reading is from Acts, chapter 8, verse, beginning at verse 14. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had not only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. The word of the Lord. Come, gracious Spirit, heavenly dove, with light and comfort from us. Display and 
and make us know and choose thy way. Plant holy fear in every heart that we from God may ne'er depart. Lead us to Christ the living way, nor let us from his pasture stray. Lead us to holiness, the road that we must take to dwell with God. Lead us to heaven that we may share fullness of joy forever there. Lead us to God, our final rest, to Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of Christ. May Jesus, who waded into the River Jordan for our sakes, be honored in this reflection and in all our hearts. Amen. Who are you? Have you asked yourself that lately? How do any of us identify ourselves? Identity is a huge thing in our cultural landscape. Some of us identify ourselves most closely with our jobs. I'm an accountant, I'm a police officer, I'm a priest. Others consider their family roles as most definitive of who they are. I am a mother, I am a father, I am a brother. The question of who we are can be a complicated one because we all carry many titles and many roles and have often competing voices telling us who we are. Who are you? It may be a difficult question to answer. Jesus did not have this problem, at least not after his baptism. Who was Jesus? Well, according to Luke, God gave a very clear message about this. The heavens opened, the Spirit came down, and the voice of God announced that he was God's beloved Son, God's pleasing, well-beloved Son. That's pretty clear. We don't all enjoy that kind of certainty about who we are. And in Luke's Gospel account of the baptism of Christ, uh, unlike Matthew's or Mark's or John's, the announcement of who Jesus is seems to have come privately. In Luke, the voice does not come as Jesus is baptized, something that would have been surely witnessed by many. It comes after Jesus is baptized. Here again what Luke says. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came. The picture is one of privacy and intimacy between father and son. Jesus, standing among all the others who had been baptized, is praying just as they likely were, and then comes this voice. 
What a comfort and a challenge to Jesus. What clarity about who he was. Would others have noticed the dove? And if they did, would they have thought that it was anything special? I guess we can't know for sure. What we do know is that the proclamation was clear. Jesus was the Son of God. Even if Jesus heard this news privately, as seems to be the case in Luke, or if the announcement was more public and obvious, as it seems in the other Gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell this story, and they tell it so that the rest of us will hear the news. Jesus is God's beloved Son. There's no ambiguity, no identity crisis. Jesus is clear on who he is, and the Gospel writers want us to be clear about it too. It matters who Jesus is, but his baptism also helps us to understand who we are. Who are you? You might be an accountant, or a father, or a pet owner, or dozens of other things. But above all, you are a child of God. Although Jesus is uniquely and solely the Son of God, his baptism reminds us that all who come to him in repentance and in faith are also children of God. Jesus did not need to be baptized. He had no sin. But he did it to identify with those he came to save, signaling that we are all invited to be part of God's beloved ones. Do you remember your own baptism? Baptism gives us many gifts, but the greatest gift is a new identity. We are given the Spirit, as is made plain in the readings today, but we are also given that surety of who we are. It's not that there's anything wrong with our other roles in life, our jobs and our responsibilities to family and friends and our communities shape us in large part, and they are holy callings. But if we forget that first and foremost, we are beloved children of God, we will walk through life frightened and insecure. After all, jobs can be lost. Too many people are learning that lately. Loved ones can be lost too. Even skills and hobbies can be lost as our bodies age and our abilities fade. And the pandemic has taken so many of these away, jobs and hobbies and social clubs, and yes, loved ones. And if we have defined ourselves only by these roles we play or things we can do or people we are in relationship with, then where will we be when these things are gone? The only thing that cannot be taken away from us in this life or in the next is the gift of being a child of God. Jesus knew this. He knew that as God's beloved, and in his case, unique son, nothing could ultimately destroy him. And that's why he was able to give his life away, both in how he lived and in how he died. We are now already in the second week of Epiphany, and in this season we reflect on the high points of Jesus' life, if you will, on the words and events that revealed who he was. His baptism is one such event. But if all we do is nod our heads and say, yes, he was and is the Son of God, we are not likely to be changed. And so let's ask God to speak to our hearts to remind us that we too belong to him. This is true no matter what we've done, no matter how worthy or unworthy we feel. One of the things I love about the fact that the Anglican Church baptizes babies is that it speaks this truth loud and clear. What can a baby do or say to be worthy of God's grace? Nothing. They are loved just because they are loved. And that has how God sees you. Now you might say, of course, babies are innocent, but what about the rest of us? We're not innocent. Even those who don't put a lot of store in words like sin can wonder from time to time how God must see them if God knows our worst act. And to you, and as a reminder to me, I want to share a wonderful baptism story. It is penned by French writer Henri Barbousse. 
He tells of a conversation overheard in a trench full of wounded men during the First World, World War. One of the men, who was badly wounded and knew he had only minutes to live, says to one of the other men, Listen, Dominic, you've led a very bad life. Everywhere you are wanted by the police. But there are no convictions against me. My name is clear. So here, take my wallet, take my papers, my identity, take my good name, my life, and quickly hand me your papers, and I will carry all your crimes away with me in death. In baptism, Jesus switches papers with us. We identify with him. This doesn't mean we lose our individuality. God made us all different and loves our individuality. But it does mean that who we are begins and ends in him. That's good news, because when we are in Christ, there is no possibility of falling victim to identity theft. No one can take who we are away from us any more than the cross and the grave could take away the power and the truth of who Jesus was. Of course, there is much more to baptism than this. Baptism also commissions us and empowers us to serve the world God loves. But today, let's ask ourselves if we know who we are, even as we hear the voice from heaven telling us who Jesus is. And let us also hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, who brings beautiful words of comfort to God's people, words that are as much ours today as then. Who are we? Listen to the words of the prophet, who speaks God's voice to us. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray in faith to God our Father, to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For the Church of the Living God, throughout the world, let us ask the riches of his grace. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the Prime Minister of this country, and for all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace, let us ask the strength of God. Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity, let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. The Collect for the Baptism of the Lord. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, Keep your children, born of water and the Spirit, faithful to their calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 